tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Um, the original Anavari team, kasi, uh, originally, it wasn't them. It was just uh, an old colleague of mine and, and me. But um, my other colleague decided to pursue something else. So I decided to postpone uh, the creation of the books. And then years later, I, I, I told these friends of mine, like, Do you guys like the idea of building a comic book company? And they said, like, like Marvel in DC? And like, something like that, yeah. I mean, like, why not, right? And they said, okay, so I, I, I guess we could do this. So hence, uh, David hop aboard and then <clears throat> Uh, Christopher the idea because he's also a comic book uh, collector and, and a manga fan. And then Melvin, I, I met him on a stream and then he got recommended by some good friends of mine who are also in the industry. And then I said like, Melvin, this is what I want to happen. And I wanted to come to fruition and I really wanted to make it a reality. And he said like, and let's make it real. So Melvin and I uh, set up a meeting and then we signed a contract and then we hired him and then we decided he was so good at doing his job and then we decided to make him a one of the business partners inside the Anavari Originals or Anavari Publishing. That's how it all started and then like we just continue making characters that inspire us every day. You know like when we're taking, uh, when we're taking a bath or like oh what about let's make a character that's from Japan. Okay let's do that. So you know we we kind of like mishmash everything. Yeah, I know, right? How uh, we create a character, we create characters even in the toilet, and we said like we just write it down and stuff, and we draw some caricatures and prototypes, and then yeah, so th th basically that's how it started. Again, my that's journey as a comic book enthusiast, but I actually read a lot of literature, so that's part of the territory I'm in. Um, it all started with Tina Tinapay. If you are familiar with the local comics that we have, the horror novels, you know those graphic um, comics that used to be sold near bus stops, bus station, bazooka comics, and that Sunday comics. Um, that's how I began my comic enthusiasm. And in college, I collected a lot of Deadpool, but you know, I downloaded them and sometimes I would go with Zo in Tagi and roam around from this comic book joint that cost about 50 pesos, 20 dollars and just um, rummage through the old collections that that is being sold. Uh, the other exposure that I have in comics is the old cartoons. If you remember Fantastic Four, um, Spider-Man and Spider -Man, friendly, yeah. fr uh, friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man and um, of course uh, that old sitcom of Batman Do you remember that? Batman and Ro Robin the, the, the one um, that is shown in the 50s and the 60s Adam West? Adam yes. West, yeah Adam West, Adam West. Adam West. Na -na -na -na, Batman Batman <laughs> And the old Avengers, not the modern one. <laughs> so these are my influences in comics. And of course, I will not forget the local references. Darna, Cristala, um, the Gamboy. The Gamboy. Captain, Captain Marvel. So, Yon. These are our gems, eh? especially Darna. So Darna goes back way to the golden age of comics. Together with Tina Tinapay, Mighty Mouse. So these are, this is my um, influences. Aside from that, I love reading philosophical books. It comes with territory because I work as a mental health practitioner then as well. So this part on the philosophical side, I'm mostly influenced by Frederick Nietzsche, um, Rene Descartes. Yes, Carl Jung is the archetype. So among the psychologists, he's the one known for using archetypes like the anima and stuff like that. 
So this is my influence. That's cool. What about you? Uh, um, um, no, is the story is yung kay Sir Berlin Manalaysay, Tom Patron. Oh, yeah. Tom Patron. So you are familiar with that? Yeah. Ay, uh, hanggang ano yun, hanggang hanggang, <laughs> hal, hanggang high school. Tapos natigil lang din dahil nga nag-stop sila sa ano eh. Sa pag-publish kasi nga when Y2K came in, alam mo na, mga entertainment, video games, mga arcade malls, medyo na bawasan na yung mga readers ng mga taan ng comics, especially local. So you think may influence yung internet? Very big uh, factor why the comic uh, industry really uh, fell to the ground. Because you know, like it's easy to download the contents of the PDF of these things. Mm-hmm. Like, no matter how much uh, trademark you put into these books or how much uh, print protections or whatnot, um, people really find ways to pirate this. Uh, similar with with uh, with music, um, it's it's just really saddening. Like uh, we're facing these issues not only in music but also in in uh, book publishing, regardless if it's comic or or novel type. You, you can actually download like even novels or like Lord of the Rings. I, I heard one guy told me, "Bro, you want some book of Lord of the Rings?" So I thought he was gonna give me like a, a hardbound. He said like, "Oh no, you just need a PDF. Uh, a, a PDF. You have this drive right here. Just I'm like, oh okay." But I didn't actually get it because you know I, I'm a writer too, and I really don't want to, uh, <laughs> you know, like I don't want my book to be like on some dude's drive. You know? yeah, no. It also goes down from my family history. Um, when my mom was young uh, in Bicol, um, we used to, uh, my mom, I heard that when they were young, they used to have this kind of a business that they they have a comic book rental back then on the early days when she was a kid. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, they they also sell DIY comics on, on, on those early days. It was a really classic Filipino comic and then uh, and then my mom went to United States, right? And she kind of like Superman, and she introduced me to Superman. I actually have a photo of me wearing a Superman costume when I was a kid, but I didn't just upload it here because I was having second thoughts of giving it here in, in, in the public, no. But um, yeah, um, it started there, and then although I it, I didn't really appreciate it when I was a kid, mm-hmm. then um, my dad decided to uh, buy me my very first comic book. Um, he came home coming from uh, Pilocos, I think, that time. And then he bought me a comic book with kind of like a, like a pasalubo, right? Mm-hmm. It was, I, I can't forget that comic book. It's actually Fantastic Four. That was my Ooh. very first comic book. Yeah, that's right. My dad bought me a Fantastic oh Four. And, and, and it was I'm actually not about it. Like, I don't mind if people call me a nerd or a geek about I I love it. <laughs> Usually, because if a comic book reader nerd karo or geek karo, I don't mind. I mean, I love it. People are enjoying the Netflix stuff of, of, of these movies, so exactly. That's and I, true. I'm done with it. So mm-hmm. yeah, yep. So far, um, uh, entrepreneurship, like like this Elon Musk, Steve Jobs, Stan Lee stuff. Uh, before I was a, before I am a comic book uh, producer, I am a business person. I really love entrepreneurship. I'm running a live streaming company now. And and uh, I'm also running this uh, publishing company, which is also my one of my, my main brainchild. So, you know, that was uh, the thing that really influenced me. But what really influenced me to produce this comic book is I hope it's okay and, and it's safe to say I really want to produce a book that the world could really love. You know, um, mm-hmm. I, I'm really inspired by Captain Barbell. Yeah, that's true. I'm really inspired by Captain Barbell in the local settings. That book has so much potential in it, as in even Darla. Especially pag na pag nariani. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.